for air touch. Clean and straight hair. If you have dirty hair and if it's not straight, you're not gonna be able to separate the short pieces nicely and you're not gonna have either clean access to your scalp or either you're gonna be in a problem because those hair that is greasy, they're gonna stick together and you're not gonna be able to separate them, okay? So this is an example, it's a mannequin head, but the hair is nice and clean, you can go through with your hand. So first step of getting the perfect air touch is a clean hair, okay? That makes sense? Air touch, like I said, is made in Russia by Vladimir Sarbashev, and I'm one of his students and I took his class three and a half years ago in LA and it was insanely expensive class. Three days, first day was a lot of talking on Russian that I didn't understand nothing. The second day was his demo that I've seen what he's doing but I didn't understand nothing again because there was a lot of talking. And the third day is was hands on. That had hands on, I didn't know what I'm doing. I got a little bit because he showed us all five different sectionings for the air touch, which is really important, but you have to go on a step higher and become this. I made this way, way more simple that you can use in a salon every day. I'm gonna say this section that I'm, that I'm gonna show you today, it's something that I'm using 85% clients in my salon. Is that okay? I'm gonna show you the mannequin head with a sectioning that I prepped for you. She's not that pretty because she's bold, right? All right, but she's gonna do the thing. First section is gonna go from the neck area all across the top, occipital bone, and it's gonna meet you on half. Second one is gonna be behind your ear, all over, second ear, and it's gonna give you, you cannot see it here, because it's only sectioning, but that's the way how you're gonna start. I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna show you this, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on my mannequin head with the hair. After that, you're gonna go half of your eyebrow, the back, and in that way, you're gonna create this, this rhombus here, and this sectioning is called rhombus because of this thing here. And this is really important thing. And I'm gonna show you why on my mannequin head. So when you do those sections, it's gonna, literally when you made this rhombus, it's gonna show you all sections, all seven sections right away. Section number one, section number two, section number three, four, five is on the other side, sorry about this and then six and seven. I'm gonna do a quick demo on my mannequin head with this sectioning, okay? Write down the questions about this and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. This is really important when you start to do proper sectioning and when you start to do proper basic things about air touch, you're gonna be able to do decent air touch. Everything else is on you, whatever is not perfect as you wish as you want, you should work on that. I'm gonna tell you that my first air touch after that class of, listen to me, $3,000. Have you ever imagined that you're gonna pay $3,000 for one class that you don't understand even single word? Yeah, I'm crazy, I did it. My first air touch when I come back in the salon, it was so bad that I have to put level four all over. Yeah, it was disaster. My first air touch. That that couldn't be fixed unless one color all over. So don't. It's not easy, but this is the reason why I'm making everything simple that you can understand right away. Okay, let me show you. Am I take off? Okay. Oh, it's you. Okay. So middle part is my to go all the time. Parting and sectioning for air touch, okay? Middle part. And that middle part is gonna fall all the way back, half of the neck. There you go. This is first thing. 
this is something that you have to start off. I don't do this anymore because I practice so much and I start and I become so obsessed with the timing and everything, but I don't do this. I'm gonna go straight right now. I'm gonna go straight on my rumbles because I know where he's laying down, but you have to start with this, okay? After that, we're gonna go behind the ear, top of the head. There you go. Can you see this? Back on the ear. And then clip this one. There you go. Leave this one here. Do the same thing on the other side. Back of the ear. I cannot see what I'm doing, but let me know if there's something that you cannot see. And right now, I have four equal sections here. There you go. Four equal sections. Can you see it? This is the start point. Look at this right now. When you go in the front, half of your eyebrow, not your, your client eyebrow, make that section straight. Flip this up, do the same thing on the other side. Guess what is happening? We have section six and seven, so we have top already done, okay? With that being said, when you do that, can you see this point in here? Just go through there, go a little bit above occipital bone. You can feel it here, a little bit there. Do the same thing on the other side. Connect the dots. Look at this. So this is one part of my rhombus. This is here. And then from the same point, just connect two more dots, make another triangle. And there you go. You have your sectioning done. Seems complicated, but actually it's not. So you can see the rumbles here, from here. I'm gonna do this real quick to show you. Okay, section number one, number two, number three, four, other side, five, and we have sections six and seven. Really easy. Guys, do this sectioning on any kind of highlights, balayage, baby lights, air touch, you're gonna see a huge difference. I'm gonna show you and explain you why. Can you see this rhombus on the top? This is my section number one for my partial. Why? When you let it go down, can you see how much it's gonna cover? It's gonna cover everything on the back. You're gonna see that. So I did just that and you cannot tell that this is partial. Does this make sense? Let me hear. Rhombus here. Placement like that is gonna go wide enough to cover the back of the head and it's gonna go deep enough on the top to cover everything that you can see. When I show you this little trick right now, you're gonna have aha moment big time. Why rhombus? Anybody else is gonna ask me why not horseshoe? I'm gonna show you. Think about rhombus. 
if you do the thrombus and if you place, I'm gonna do this, and if you place your foil following the shape of the rhombus, like this, on this angle, so you're following your rhombus, you see this? When you go with that shape from here to the other side of rhombus, you're gonna get perfectly seamless, soft grow-out. Why is that? Because your foil is gonna lay down like this, but when you dry it out and it's moving it here, it's gonna be perfectly seamless because it's angled. Does that make sense? I'm gonna show you right now, stop there with sectioning, stop there, pause, and I'm gonna show you how to do air touch. But look at this, if you do the same thing with the regular highlights with this placement, those highlights are not gonna be vertical, it's gonna lay down and it's gonna give you a seamless blend, but it's gonna give you a full coverage on the top. Does this make sense? Look at this, my air touch. What that means for proper air touch? When you do the section, cannot be thicker than quarter of the inch. Cannot be. Thick section, it's not gonna do anything good for you. That means thick section is gonna save you some time, but a thick section, it's wide on the bottom close to the scalp, so it's gonna give you the corners. We don't want corners. Everybody asking me, how you have that perfect blend? Because I have a thin section. I'm gonna take a section, I'm gonna comb it out, because my hair is clean, I'm gonna comb it out. I'm gonna hold with my fingers, but you cannot pinch it. No pinching. When you pinch the hair, you pinching everything so the short pieces cannot come down. Okay? Cannot come down. No pinching. So you're holding. Nice. You're gonna place your blow dryer on the angle 90 degrees from the strand. First place it. Turn on. And then move your fingers down to decide how much hair is gonna give you, it's gonna stay in the foil. You see how that goes nice and smooth? The more I going down with my fingers, she's gonna be less blonde. So it's not a thickness of the strand, it's not gonna make you more or less blonde. How much you're gonna leave in your foil, it's gonna give you look. Does that make sense? Look at this, it's 80% it's short hair, 20% is light hair. Think about that, imagine what's gonna happen if you do 20% blonde, it's gonna be nice and soft, but it's not gonna be that visible. But if you have closer to the scalp, there's no blowout, this is gonna be fully blonde. If you go a little bit more, it's gonna give you less blonde. Does that make sense? So ratio and balance in between short and long piece, it's gonna determine how blonde your client is gonna be. So this is depth, this is blonde piece, all together is gonna give you a blend and melt. So think about this, if you don't blow out too much, yeah, of course she's gonna be blonde, and she's gonna have a line of demarcation, of course, because you bleached a lot of the hair. When I'm doing an air touch, I've never, never done air touch with less than 60% in the foil, 40% out of the foil. This is my two go. So everything is on third. One third of the hair is gonna be out of the foil, one third of the hair, you see the length, one third of the length. So think about the length and think about the depth. When you combine this, it's gonna be perfectly blended, but blonde. One more thing, again, clean hair, comb out, you have to comb it, stretch with a decent tension, don't do this, Decent tension, place your blow dryer, then turn on, then turn on. 
and go down and determine how much she's going to be blonde. Does that make sense? What's going to happen? If you put your blow dryer here and it's on, you already, you don't have control. And that's gonna say that you start to blow the hair from the top, and that means when you come down, it's gonna be tangled. It's gonna be wrapped around the hair, and you see how it's going up. It's gonna give you a difficulties. You see this? When you move the strand, this here is wrapped around the longer pieces, and it's going up. So it's gonna, it's not gonna allow you to go close to the scalp, and you're gonna waste a lot of time. Does that make sense again? What you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do this. A lot of people doing this. This is not an air touch. This is blowing something. And then you're gonna get tangled. You're gonna try to stretch. Nothing. This is not an air touch. Okay? Air touch, again, has to be clean hair, comb out, Place your blow dryer, turn on, go down with your strand, see how much hair you're gonna leave in a foil and how much you're gonna make her blonde. Take the shorter piece, use the board, push with your stomach. You see how close I'm gonna go to the scalp? See? Push down. And that's it. Let me show you real quick with this, this section what's gonna happen. So how fast I'm gonna go? Saturation. And I'm not gonna go all the way close to the scalp. No need for that. I don't wanna get bleeders at all. Next thing, when you're closing the foils, Never, ever, don't do this, because in this way, you squeezing out your product from this part, and you're gonna get lines. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I'm hearing Amber here, so like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Close the foil, and the most common question, how are you preventing not opening your foils for the next one? Look at this. Make it curvy. So use those two fingers, can you see it? Let me show you here. Take with those two fingers, your thumbs, and just move it down. Next section, quarter of the inch thick. Put it down, flip it, comb it through, place your blow dryer. Move it, stretch your hair, make a clean axis. Apply it. Saturation. If you do this just once, what's gonna happen? When you lift your strand, it's not gonna be saturated well. You have to be sure that you're saturating really well. That's gonna give you a lift. And then again, once folding the foil, second time folding the foil. You see, I'm not squeezing this because I wanna keep my lightener evenly distributed. I'm not gonna close this one. I didn't curve it here. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen. This is happening to you all the time. Because this little trick, it's gonna make your life easier. And look at what's gonna happen. I know that's gonna happen. It's gonna be, my foil is gonna be open. Same foil, hold this in. Same foil, with this little pinch here, same strand, all same. It's not gonna get open. And I know a lot of you who tried air touch like, oh, that's the thing. Yes, that is the thing. That's the reason why you're in here. The little things, the little details.
Write down all the questions that you have for me here. I'm gonna answer all of them later. You see how this fast goes for me? It's really fast. So for me, this is something that I'm gonna be done with my air touch, top hour and a half, full section. Partial is 45 minutes. Because I have the moves already there. So you see, going here, blonde. look at this. So I wanna make it less long. I'm gonna just go further down to the strand. But if you go too much, it's gonna happen this. This is nothing, okay? And I know you all writing down the questions right now. Does it have to be Dyson? No. Can be done with any other blow dryer, but I'm gonna tell you what you have to be aware of. Here's my face. I am not paid from Dyson. I'm buying their things, spending my money, but I don't regret because this is the best thing that I can invest in my salon service. All of my style is they have Dyson. Why? This nozzle is wide enough and it's thin enough to provide you enough power. Next thing, I hate that my blow dryer is gonna have an engine in the body and it's gonna suck up my hair, my client hair. I hate that. This engine is in a handle. This is empty. This is just a heater in here. Next thing, you have bottom on and off. So look at this, on, off. All other blow dryers, they're gonna have a speed one, two, three. So it's gonna be like, hmm, need a few sec, not a few, you need like three seconds of power to, because you're going like one, two, three. That is the full power. When you're using any other blow dryer, except Dyson, you should do this. You should have the same section, okay? Place your blow dryer, turn on and wait two seconds until you get full power. Does that make sense? So turn on, wait, you're gonna get, you're gonna go through those stages like speed one, two, three, then you have full power and then you're gonna move down your, finger, your fingers, find the amount of the hair that you need, then you're gonna put in a foil. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay? This part, this sectioning. Just with your regular highlights, if you place them vertical, it's gonna leave you a line how it grows out because you're placing those highlights like this. How are you placing them? That's the way how they're gonna grow up, right? Mm -hmm. It's gonna give you a line because you place them like this. If you go more, if you go more vertical, not horizontal, sorry about that, that's my mistake. It's gonna grow more seamless and more softer and gentle. When we're done with this section here, everything is gonna go down like this. Does that make sense? Yeah, so they're they're able to see things a lot better now. They said it's the best it's been all class, so that's good. And then we had one person ask what lightener you're using and how do you mix it? For this one? Uh-huh. Oh, for this one, this is a leftover from my client because like, <laughs> it is Vario with 15 volume, so I mix 10 volume and 20 volume, but those are the leftovers, okay? <laughs> because I'm not gonna do the full thing. For this level of the hair, which is level seven, close to the eight, really blonde. So this is mostly Russian, Lithuanian, Ukrainian hair is on this level. I'm gonna use clay with seven to 10 volume, believe it or not. 
Because if she's already naturally level eight, what are you looking for? One, two levels of left. That is clay with seven volume in a foil. What's gonna happen if you use level seven fine European Russian hair with blonde me? It's gonna turn white in a 10 minutes and it's gonna fall off. This is the answer why clay in the foils. Because you're gonna get what you're looking for. That makes sense? Yes, I know. <laughs> so we have one other question because you have your board there. Do you have a favorite board that you like to use for this? Because <laughs> you have a favorite dryer, you have favorite products. So maybe a favorite board. Oh, here's again my face here. Okay, guys. I've tried all of the boards and all of them were good, but none of them were perfect. Okay? I've tried the wooden board. It's great, but you know what's the problem? It's a wood. After that, we're gonna have a toner, we're gonna have a bleach, we have to clean it, we have to water it. Wood cannot stain the, stain the water, okay, and the products. Then I've tried the plastic one. It's amazing, but it's happened to me I literally just hit the corner and because it's plastic, it's acrylic plastic and it started to be brewing. I've tried the metal one. It's too heavy and it's too sharp because it's like, if you want to make it too thin, it has to be sharp. And then I made this one. It's made by me and it's made of carbon fiber, which is undestroyable and it's super thin and it's flexible and it's just amazing. So I'm waiting for the packaging for this one. And I hope in the next month it's gonna come out from sa for sale. It's in a two length. It's a short one and a long one. So if you want, you can go on my Instagram, DM me, and I'm gonna put you on a list. When the boards become available, I'm gonna send you a DM, okay? All the information about that, just send me a DM, DM on my Instagram, danilo.bozik, and I'm gonna give you all the answers, okay? Awesome. I just put in the comment box, I was like, I want one. <laughs> I mean, because we hit that new year in China, everything is backed up, so I'm waiting for my packaging more than a two weeks, so hopefully it's gonna come soon. And we are done with this. I'm gonna show you the front a little bit later because we have my model done and we're gonna jump on the subject which is toning. Toner using more vibrance. Be careful with this one. Usually I'm not gonna do a root smudge because air touch is gonna give me perfect and seamless blend. It's gonna go close to the scalp and if you don't make a big difference in between levels, so that means if you have level seven and you bleach her to, to level nine, she's gonna look all over blonde and there is no contrast in between levels. So no need for a root smudge. My client, she's dark and I wanna keep her safe for the next six months until the next appointment. So I'm gonna do a root smudge. Uh, one girl did ask, do you use the board for even regular highlights? Or yes. Yes, I'm gonna use the board for everything because I'm gonna show you that later on question and answers. Why I think the board is necessary for any kind of service because you're gonna get a better saturation, you're gonna get a better, fo a better uh, control and you know what, your foils are not gonna look messy so if you post on Instagram, people are gonna get engaged with a nice foil placement, okay? So that's the reason why I'm using all colorful foils by Framar because people like to see them all colorful and all nicely packed and all nicely folded. People, that's the engagement. Okay? And again, one more thing, I'm not paid by the Framar as well. <laughs> I'm just sharing what I like to use in my salon. I don't, I don't, I don't mind spend money that is gonna give me a, something back. If I'm gonna spend more money for Framar foils and I'm gonna get two more clients in a chair through the Instagram because they're gonna like the foils, I'll take it. So investing 15 bucks to get 500, so I think it's a good profit though, right? All right, so 
I'm gonna move this away for a little bit and we're gonna have Mimi in a chair. Mimi, come on. And I mean for application this, let's say, not more than an hour. Seems a lot, but this is more than a partial retouch. And she come back for every six months. Okay, so I'm gonna have one, two, three, I'm gonna have four sections for my partial. But with my partial, I'm gonna cover everything except this area here. I'm gonna do this every second time. But when I show you later my sectioning, it's gonna be way more clear why I'm doing the rhombus on the top, how I'm gonna cover my neck area, how I'm gonna refresh my ends. Because remember, six months is a long time. After six months, every hair is gonna turn yellow. Doesn't matter how good you're gonna bleach it, it's gonna turn yellow. Build up, exposing the underlying pigment, it's always there. You cannot avoid that. Whoever told you that it's gonna bleach and avoid yellow, he getting so close to fry that hair. Level 10, level 11, existing, but it's not that good. There's so little amount of the people who can stand bleaching to level 11. She's not to really level five. She's dark. She have gray hair, sorry me, it's a fact. She have gray hair, she's level five. Her hair is curly and coarse. So that is all something that I'm gonna talk, talk about later. Why it's important to use the different bleach for different type of the hair. You cannot use the same bleach on a different type of the hair. Let me show you this real quick. So she have a grow out of four inches. Can you see this? This is one type of the bleach and this is something that is previously bleached. This is different kind of bleach. You all work with Schwarzkopf and you're familiar with that. So this is very old. With half 10 and half 20 volume, so I made 15 volume. On virgin here, natural level 5, and then I mix clay with 10 volume, actually with 7 volume because it's on bone, my, bone meal line, with 7 volume for pre-bleach here because while I'm looking here, I'm just looking for refreshment. If you're talking about the bleach, I'm going to tell you, Vario is going to give you up to 7 levels of lift. So while I'm looking, in real world, it's going to be 4. She's natural level 5, those 4 levels is going to give me Perfect natural level nine. Clay is something that is made to work with 30 and 40 volume open air. But I switch to the seven volume and put it in the foils because it's gonna give me a nice, easy, safe lift of two tones. That is whatever you bleached six months ago, you can re bleach with vario, with clay, and seven volume. This is ratio one and three. When you dilute your product, because all the power is in the product, when you dilute, it's gonna be even even less weak, sorry about this. Does this make sense a little bit for you? A little bit. Okay, I have a lot of questions. People saying, why do I use with blonding? Nine, level, nine levels of lift. Why do I need that? I don't need that. That's for a root touch up. That is for really, really dark and coarse hair. I don't need that. But you know why I don't need it? Can you see? Can you see how my section is wide? How my section is, is fine, not fine, fine. Because I'm gonna get super good lift. I don't need power. Not a lot of power, I made her, like look at this. Isn't this perfect lift? It is. And sitting like hour and a half here, and I'm completely fine with that because same thing. Level 9 is level 9, cannot be dark. Level 9 is level 9. Believe that it's going to give you up to 7 levels of lift. You can expect 5 levels in real world. With low developer, low and slow, it's going to get you in a perfect time. And you can let it sit for 3 hours and it's not going to burn out. Because there's no power, it's like we cannot. We cannot. After 20 minutes, your bleach is going to start going down with power. After 30 minutes, it's gonna be really slow. So all the lift that you get in the 30 minutes is gonna be there. Everything after that is like one or two level stop. So don't worry about that. 
It's not going to fry the hair unless you're using a blonde meat. Because blonde meat is powerful. It's amazing bleach, but powerful. And all of you have the same problem. Why is smelling so much? Can you imagine if you close the power, the foil, what's going to happen? That power going to go out. It's looking for the way to get out. So leave the room because you know you have to know that it's going to expand. That's the reason. You have to know your product. You have to know. All right, check this out. She is dark. Can we get, by any chance, computer closer to the scalp to see, to show them how there's not any single line, and that is because the placement. Can you see this? Can you see the money piece that I did here? And can you see how she's nice and soft? But don't get tricked. When you pull up, it's dark and light. And you see, I lift her like literally, like super blonde, but she's dark. And this after a month is gonna create a line of demarcation. So I'm gonna use more vibrance to prevent that because if you have level five and bleach to the level nine, what you're missing in between, I'm not gonna do the magic. I'm gonna just do the levels in between. I'm gonna do the toner level seven. It's gonna make just a softer transition. Level seven, in between level five and nine, it's something just perfect. So I'm not doing the root smudge. I'm not doing the, the root touch up. I'm not covering anything. I'm just creating the better transition. When you take a look on the back, this is just partial. And I refresh the ends. Even if I don't do any toner, she would look perfectly blonde. Look at this, and healthy. And I use the bleach over this, bleach over the bleach, but I know what I'm using and I'm still safe. Okay? So I'm gonna tell you formula for this and I'm gonna explain you, I explain you already why, and I'm gonna go with a 7.0, which is neutral. If you have perfect lift on level five, if you use ash, it's gonna show you that ash. If you use violet, it's gonna show you that violet. So you need neutral. Neutral, every neutral is made of blue or a green. So Schwarzkopf, it's made, Igora Vibrance is made super strong, so it's a green blue. More Vibrance is a blue base, so it's gonna give you that cool neutral look. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix level seven O and level seven four and more Vibrance. Four is beige, so it's, mean, it's gonna be gold violet. Wild gold violet, because I wanna get that creamy, which is gonna complement with the rest of the hair, that I'm gonna tone with a more vibrance, 9-519, 9-5.5. So it's gonna be blue violet, gold violet. It's gonna be a little bit of 011. And because she lives in Florida, she's gonna be a lot of sun. So I'm gonna over tone her with something that is more violet because it's gonna fade nicely. You have to think about that. So. What I'm doing right now, and you, that's something that you should remember, formulate for the problem, not for the solution. What does that mean? If you need a gray hair, you have to lift to the palest yellow, and you have to formulate for that to be ash. If you lift your client to level eight yellow, and you wanna get ash, you're not gonna get it. Period, you're not gonna get it ash. You can get muddy, dark, but not ash. It's gonna be cool, but it's gonna look ugly. Okay? Can you mix me uh, 7 and 7.4 more vibrance? Let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 with six volume pressing solution. And after that, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what I mix here so you can remember it. And we're gonna go through the formulation again, just to understand what is happening here. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So for the root, we're gonna call it root smudge, but it's not. I'm gonna call it root transition. 
And it's not gonna be crucial right now, but it's gonna show later. Let's say in the three months, it's not gonna be a harsh line of demarcation, it's gonna be more soft, okay? Nikki said she love, love, loves the tones that you picked or, yeah, and then uh, Jeanette was like, best base color of all time. Thank you. So they're super excited about what you chose. All right, let me tell you one more thing. More vibrance. In this case, it's not gonna give me any lift. But if you use more vibrance, level nine, or naturally fine level eight, it's gonna give you a little kind of lift. Little line, little kind of, how you call that? That's uh, shift. From? Little, little kind. But you know what's gonna happen with that? It's gonna disappear in a week because it's not strong enough to penetrate deep enough in the hair. So in a week or two weeks, that that is gonna give give you a shift. It's gonna somehow it's just disappeared. But if you use more vibrance and thirteen volume lotion on this. With level nine, it's gonna give you warm outcome or natural base. Think about that. More vibrance is gonna give you, in some cases, it's gonna give you a little bit of lift, especially if you're using with a 13 volume. So my application is really quick and I'm just doing a root tap here. Can you see this well, guys? It's again, one quarter of the inch, not more than that. And for any of you that didn't see it in the notes, we are videoing some of this. So some of these highlights we will be sending to you later on so that you can see it clearer. And we definitely want you to ask some questions. So feel okay, free to you can type do that while I'm doing box. this. Yeah, type into the chat box if you have any questions. While he is applying, now is a perfect time for us to ask some questions. Yes, so definitely. If you guys have some questions, please type them into the chat box. I'd love to get you guys some answers while he's applying the root tap. All right, so we got one. Uh, oh, no, we got a comment. Nick says he likes it when he calls it more vibrance. And that's actually kind of a term from Schwarzkopf that we call it more vibrant. And that's because it has more performance, more selection, more anything than what we had before in a demi permanent. So that's actually why we call it hashtag more vibrance. So if you are doing stuff on your own and you're using vibrance, you can actually use the hashtag more vibrance for future reference when you're posting stuff online. And also don't forget to follow Schwarzkopf Pro um, oh, I'm sorry, Schwarzkopf USA on Instagram and also Schwarzkopf Professional USA on Facebook because we're constantly doing things on there, posting different videos and different techniques. So make sure you're also tagging Schwarzkopf USA whenever you're posting your work and that'll get you noticed by us too. So anyone else have any questions? It looks like we got this. So there is a question by Sarah. Do you go horizontal through all the sections or follow the head shape? I don't have basic rule for that because I, most of the thing that I have done is with the placement. So for me, it doesn't matter for that. I'm gonna show that later only if you wanna get more kind of like darker on the top with that uh, teardrop toning. I'm gonna show you that later on a mannequin head. Why is that different than the regular one? For me, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go just through the hair hole here just real quick which is right now uh, can you mix me my base toner please so um, and if I remember correctly you're currently using six volume lotion it is yeah yes. uh, and then one other question and I think this is a great one for while you're working through this how long do you take and how much do you charge for this service what service uh, the air touch service. the air touch okay that's something that it's cannot be globalize for everybody so for me i'm gonna charge my all all of my services for this for a full air touch is gonna start with the 500s and up 
because I'm gonna take at least five hours for booking. Let's say I'm gonna do two hours for application, one hour for processing and two hours for finishing. In real life, that's not taking me too long because I'm recording and I have a lot of stops and everything, the, the Instagram content. If I don't do that, it's gonna be hour and a half, hour, hour and a half. So it's not that bad service, but you have to practice and get there. My first air touch take me eight hours and it's okay. My assistant, they're gonna book a little bit longer because they still, need a little bit of the, 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 the time to get that perfect. But it's it, like I'm booking for five hours and starting with $500. That means when I'm done with the application, I'm gonna have a client in between. I will say the best way how you're gonna charge for the, for the air touch is how it looks. If it looks amazing, charge them everything. Charge them like whatever you can. And if not, just start for a base as a regular baby lights because full head of a lot of baby lights is gonna take you some time. So go from there. If you charge for a full, full head of baby lights with a haircut for 350, start from there. You're gonna just see the difference on the next appointment. When you start redoing the ear touch, you don't have any more overlapping. No overlapping. So the girl that asked about the horizontal sections, she meant during your air touch technique. Do you keep them horizontal sections or do you follow the head shape during? I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show that later. I'm gonna show the full sectioning, how it's gonna look on every section, okay? Awesome. And my all over toner is really quick. So I have a root smudge. I'm gonna do that in a bottle. This is 9519, 955, and 011. Can you say that slower for them to hear? No, I cannot. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Here, I have more vibrance. 9.5-19 with 9.5-5 with a little bit of 011 with a six volume activator job. Okay, so let's break it down for a little bit. This is blue violet violet gold violet so mostly is violet and gold why is that what's gonna happen when you mix gold and violet you're gonna get creamy if you have perfectly lifted hair to the pale yellow and if you add gold and violet in that with a little bit of more blue because i want to make her ashier she's gonna get perfectly cool blonde creamy that's my to go formula and then can you repeat the root tap formula? Root tap is really simple. It's 7-0 seven, seven oh with 7-4. Seven Perfect. Um, and then there was a question. Do you suggest using this technique for Asian level three coarse hair? All right. Let's go in the beginning. This is technique. Technique cannot give you the levels of lift. It's gonna give you a look. If she's Asian, she's level three. I don't know how you're gonna let, lift her to the level nine, I cannot. So you can use the technique, if she have those shorter pieces to, to separate, to get nice and seamless blend. But I will say she's gonna be like either chocolatey or something red or something deep, deep ashy. Don't expect her to be blonde. It's not a technique that is gonna give you a level of lift. Technique is gonna give you just the, the, the certain look. There was also a question about wavy curly hair. Uh, for those clients, uh, for prepping, do you ask them to come in with their hair straight or do you straighten it for them? How do you? I do straightening for all my clients. Okay. It's like six minutes with a flat iron and I'm gonna do it by myself. Awesome. And then um, somebody wanted to know more about the clay bleach and when to use it. I don't know if you want to answer that or if you want. Uh, we're gonna go through that a little bit later Perfect. if you want. So we're can go a little bit deeper that in that. Sounds good. And I think uh, the only other one, I think you're going to answer this later. Is there a special way you do air touch on the top front sections if the client has a strong receding hairline? I'm going to show that later. I thought so. I'm going to show the money piece using air touch and I'm going to show the perfect blend on the top on the front. So stay tuned, everybody. We got yep. some good stuff coming. I'm going to always brush out and comb out, not the comb out. I'm going to brush out my toner for even distribution. I'm gonna always start on the back with my toner. 
Sometimes when it's one all over toner, I'm gonna do that in a shampoo bowl, just like real quick at two minutes. Because if you think about that, you're gonna spend 15 minutes or half an hour longer for your application time for a foil work, but then you're gonna be super fast with your toner. So you don't waste your time. You're doing the same thing. Just like you getting better blend on your application that you don't have to fix with the toners. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, you had a comment, someone said they're dying. They would love to sit in your chair and they're not even blonde. <laughs> oh, awesome. Uh -huh. yep. I, I have a lot of hairstylists in my chair. First of all, they wanna see what I'm doing in person and they're all being shocked when they sit in a chair and they're gonna say they're a hairstylist and I'm gonna start sharing everything what I'm doing here because I don't mind sharing my knowledge. I don't mind to tell them and show them because I know they came in, they're gonna pay my service, not for being blonde, but to get a little bit more of extra knowledge for that. Because currently I don't take any in-person education because of COVID situation, but it's gonna, it's gonna happen when everything back to the normal, I'm gonna start taking that shadowing classes to show everything for the, let's say two people at a time, whatever I'm doing in a salon. Start with the consultations and then everything else. And I can attest to the fact that he takes classes because he's been to some that I have hosted. Yeah. So. And I've learned a lot. Well, good. Um, there is a question too. Is prep included in your price? And if so, does the client know that? Prepping is always included in your price unless they have a hard mineral buildup and then I'm going to use, uh, don't laugh at me, but it's a... Uh, Clarifying treatment and uh, cleansing treatment for Frotskoff. I always forget the name. It's that uh, bond something. Blonde me, blonde me detoxify. That there you go. Blonde me detoxify. <laughs> that's something that I, that's something that I'm gonna charge a little bit only because you're requiring some time. So that means you have to wash the hair, you have to apply the product, you have to sit, you have to dry it, and blow dry it. That's not a lot. But the people who have a buildup, they know they're dealing with a hard time of having buildup, so they're gonna pay just to remove that. So there was also a question about was the hair conditioned at all before toning or just shampooed? This is shampoo and conditioner. I'm gonna always condition my pre-tone only because it's easier to brush it out. And I like to use, so my product that I'm using for the, for the maintenance, it's Alterna in Schwarzkopf. I love Alterna Moisture Line. And that is again one of the brands that I'm not paid with. I know it's a sister product from, from Schwarzkopf and I love it. So I'm using Alterna Moisture every time after my bleaching because I wanna add moisture. Absolutely, and I just wanted to clarify, I know Jeanette put in the chat box that the Blonde Me Detox System is great for helping to get buildup off of blonde hair. And that's so true, it's gonna get any buildup, whether it's rust buildup, product buildup, if the hair turns yellow or has chlorine, it is our Blonde Me Detox system that will get all of that out for you. And there was one other question. How much did you put in of 0-11? That's a great question. So I'm going to say this is equal parts of golden violet, muted golden violet. And usually I'm not going to go more than 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 ounces of that. So that's going to be like not more than 10%. That's strong. You shouldn't overuse that. That's just a little bit. And that's because doesn't matter how fine the sections are, she's naturally dark. She's going to give you that a little bit of more of yellow. This is going to help to make, can you go a little bit closer? So this toner is sitting like not even a five minutes. And I'm going to show you how it's a little bit already violetish, purplish, and that's what I want. And that's gonna disappear. That is something that is gonna make sure that it's canceling all the yellowish tone. Don't be afraid because whatever you're mixing, you're gonna get that. Level nine, if you mix properly, it's gonna be always level nine. Cannot be level seven because you didn't mix that. But if you have porous hair and if you mix a lot of ash, so that means blue and green, don't be surprised because she's gonna turn out let's say green or violet or blue because it's porous. It's not about the toner, it's about you again because you didn't bleach it well. And don't 
blame the products. Because I'm gonna tell you this. Listen to me really carefully right now. Products don't have brain. You're the brain. We are using products. Whatever we decide to put in a bottle or in a ball, it's gonna be our decision. Whatever we decide to use the bleach, it's not a bleach fault, it's your fault because you use that. Does that make sense? Products don't have a brain. We are smart, we are learning, and we're using our products. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, my toner is done. There is one question too about it. Now that it's done, will you shampoo your toner out and just rinse well in condition? I'm not gonna shampoo my clients. I'm gonna have a clean hair, so that's the way how I'm saving my time. So I'm not shampooing my time and I'm giving longevity to my toner. If you have dirty hair client, you have to shampoo it. I'm gonna wash it before and save, save some time later. And I'm gonna give longevity to my client because remember this, every hair after bleaching, it's not a right term to say open, but we're gonna say that hair is open. It needs some time to get back natural moisture and close and seal that hair. We're trying to do that with the product, but actually the hair has to do that on their own and natural. So all of your clients are gonna fade first week or two. Mine too. But I'm not gonna shampoo it and I'm not gonna take any more tones that I don't have to. I'm gonna leave them overtoned and I'm gonna tell them, hey, it is a little bit more deeper, it is a little bit more ashier. But trust me, in a two weeks it's gonna be perfect. Like even in a week. Because everything fading. Everything fade to the yellow. Fading by the shampooing, of course, because they're gonna shampoo it at home again. Why should I do it right now? No? Hair is clean, I'm gonna just rinse my toner, do the conditioner or treatment. Most likely, I'm gonna use moisture, alternate conditioner, or blonde me mask. If I have hair that is over-processed, which is happening to me as well, I'm gonna use that blonde me for all blondes to kind of like make that hair more smooth. Is that answering your question? Perfect, thank you, is what I just said. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. So right. she is... My next thing. I'm gonna leave my toner on everything in between 10 and 20 minutes. Processing time for more reference is 20 minutes. You can only sit three hours, it's nothing gonna happen. But I'm gonna keep in between 10 and 20 minutes. In this case, I'm gonna keep her in between 15 and 20 because I wanna be sure that she's deposited really well. So manufacturers, they're gonna tell you what is ideal mixing. They're gonna tell you it's ideal mixing for bleach one and a half or one and a two. But again, you're the brain, you're gonna see, they don't know what the hair that you're using for. So you have to alternate that. Same thing with the toners. Perfect processing developing time is 20 minutes. Sometimes you're gonna overtone it and let it sit for 15 minutes and rinse it because maybe in a 20 minutes it's gonna fully develop and process is gonna be too much. So again, it's all up to you. Okay? Um, so Jason has a question and he's asking if the number, okay, if the number is the same but one is semi-permanent and one is permanent, can I use permanent to tone the hair with six volume developer? Can this be used as a toner? Uh, you can, but I'm gonna say don't, you, don't do that with Royale Gora because remember this, so you already forgot what I thought. Power is in the tube. There is the power. Think about that, what's gonna happen if you're using Royale Gora with six volume for the root touch up. Are they gonna lift your natural hair? Of course. Is it gonna give you a lot of deposit? It's gonna give you a lot of deposit. So no need for that. Why would you use permanent color for the root touch up? Unless you have to cover the gray hair, but that's completely another top topic. Toner is for toning. Color is for coloring. It's way difference in between those two things. So that's the reason why we have, why the Schwarzkopf developed TBH. TBH, 
It's something in between Royale Gora and more vibrance. If you need more lift and more deposit, but not as much as a Royal Igora, you're gonna go on TBH. That's their baby, that's in between. Okay, TBH is something that it's gonna give you a coverage, but it's gonna give you a lift, but not fully, so just mean in the middle. So if you have a hair that is so stubborn, that cannot take the toner, but you don't wanna go darker, then you should go with TBH. A TBH as well, it's gonna give you a little bit more lift, so they developed a tone softener, that means that permanent color with 50% less ammonia, if you add tone softener, it's gonna make you a uh, demi-permanent. Because tone softener is gonna soften the tone. It's still gonna be there, but that 50% less ammonia is gonna be even reduced, so it's not gonna be a permanent color. If you want, I can move this so you can stand. No, I feel great like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am like this. Watch this, like, how about this? No, thank you. They, 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 they take care of me really well. I'm gonna have some back pain, but that's okay. I mean, I'm literally... I have no, 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 that's okay. They told me everything is gonna be perfect, so this is perfect. <laughs> A little bit of joking. So, while we're talking about this... So she's gonna process for an extra 10-ish minutes. My assistant, they're gonna blow dry it and just dry it straight. We're gonna show you how it looks straight, and then after that, I'm gonna go and really quick show you how I'm doing like nice and soft waves. I don't do a whole lot of style on my clients because I want to show how it's possible to do perfect and seamless blend just with the technique because that's the point of air touch. It's seamless blend and technique that you don't have to overuse your time and products to fix the problems. If you don't make a mistake, you don't have to fix it. If you have perfect placement, you don't have to do a root shadow. If you have perfect Ratio in between your strands, you don't have to do a root smudge. So it's only, so you're wasting your time, you're spending your time on perfection of application, and then you're saving your time on your toning. Does that make sense? So you can go chunky and be done in 35 minutes for application, but then you're gonna have to do it, like after processing at least one toner, and then the second one on the top of that, and then the third one is of stretch and melt, and the fourth one, on your all over. So you're gonna spend an hour and a half in a toner and you're gonna spend four bottles of bottles or bowls of toner, which is equal if you're gonna go with a little bit more foils and spend more time on your application with the foils. Does that make sense a little bit? Yep, and Nick said brilliant. Use existing base and built in depth. There you go. Even, we're gonna go through that a little bit, how you're gonna use AirTouch as a color correction. So I'm gonna show you on my pre-AirTouch highlight, whatever the man uh, mannequin had, to show you how you're gonna do an AirTouch and how you're gonna fix the pieces in between, you're gonna get the perfect color correction. Does that make sense? All right, let's move the chair. Product, you don't want to use the rest of the leftovers? No, there's nothing. <laughs> we spent everything. Don't worry, just mix me a new one. So, there is no a lot of lift because this bleach sitting like for three hours, but still gave you a little bit of the lift. Still a little bit. So, this is the proof that if you let your Lightener sits in a bowl for an hour, you're gonna still get a lot, but not a too much. So if you know how to, if you use your proper bleach and your proper hair, if you decide properly, there's no risk that you're gonna burn the hair and over process. But if you have strong bleach on the hair that don't, don't need it, it's gonna be most likely. <coughs> so because I started with this to show you this rumble section, because we have nice and fresh bleach. This is gonna be my section number three, and I'm gonna show you where I'm starting and how I'm starting. I'm not gonna do a full application, but I'm gonna show you how, do, how I'm starting. No, no, it's not easy anymore, a lot of talking. Can you imagine talking this much and this is not your first language? It's so hard. <laughs> So there's also a question, do your clients come back in for a toner refresh in between their air touch appointments? Yes. 
But you know what? What I noticed, they're coming back only once after four weeks and after that they don't come back because it's just good color. It's not fading that bad. It's not gonna fade that bad because I'm bleaching them properly. If you bleach them to pass that yellow stage, she's not gonna turn crazy yellow because it's gonna be a little bit from the buildup and underlying pigment, but not that bad. But if you don't bleach your client properly and you fix that with a toner, that toner is gonna fade, she's gonna be back. So I know it's an extra money for you, but is it that fixing or maintenance? I think it's fixing. So I don't do fixing, only maintenance. And then Amanda asked what the recommended maintenance time is for air touch. I don't rebook for my retouch nothing sooner than three months. Some of my clients, depends on the starting level, they're coming back every six to eight months. Because think about that. If I have dark hair client and I'm gonna make her overly blonde, it's gonna show the line of demarcation, doesn't matter how good the technique and placement is but I'm gonna warn them that. I can make you blonder, but you're gonna be back in a month and a half, but you know what? I'm not gonna do it in a month and a half, because if I do month and a half, an inch of the growth, there's no way that I'm gonna skip overlapping. If I overlap twice, I'm gonna broke that hair. There is no magician in this world who's gonna stop right there where you stop, like when it's the inch of growth. When you have three inches, it's easy, because you can stop. You can close the foil, that foil is not gonna move. If you get one bleeder on an inch of growth and the second time, you fixing, you creating more problems than the good hair. When I stop doing the, when I stop taking the money every month and a half for the re-bleach touch up, I start to grow, my clients are happier. I don't have so many complaints, they don't complain. I used to do every month and a half, I was thinking I'm making money, no. I'm creating unhealthy hair and unhappy clients. Right now, it's not the same as before 20 years ago. We cannot trick them anymore. They, they have Instagram, they have the window to do in the world. They can see it. They can see people doing the different things and they're gonna come to see you and it's like, hey, why they can? And you cannot. What they doing different? There is different. We are evolving, like our industry growing so, so bad. For all of the salon owner, owners and the hairstylists who started 20 years ago, I started 22 years ago. We had only one bleach. We didn't have glass and toner. We didn't have three different kinds of colors. We worked with what we had, right? I've never heard about seven volume developer. It was like 20, 30, 40. Work with that and we create the mess right now. It's not the same. Car 20 years ago didn't have ABS, didn't have like a, a super seat belt, we didn't have airbags or something, but right now we do, so we should use them. Our industry evolving so fast. New techniques, there's some other things, th some other hairstyles thinking how to fix the problems. Can you see it? It's looking gorgeous already. Okay, she's gonna process a little bit more and then we're gonna jump and talk about some other things. Talk education. And if you have any more questions while we're talking, I'm gonna answer them all. I'm sounding, I'm sounding you right now. I'm gonna answer them all. <laughs> Can you wash this, please? Can I have a towel, please? And the water. So on top of what you said about uh, the six volume being used with the permanent, Jeanette made sure to say that it's not recommended because they have different lifting powers and different developers. So thank you, Jeanette. 